Good evening everyone. This is uh, yet another quick and dirty video so I can follow up on the progress with the Minimic uh, or in this particular case progress with the AmiCube uh, platform. So at this time I'm kind of satisfied with the floppy disk implementation with the Minimic Region Minimic Core. So I've started the work on Porting all this stuff to a new Spartan 7. So this is S50. I have a couple of P mods here just to make sure that uh, Minimic Core is up and running. I'm going to use Minimic AGA Core to start with. And um, the first thing first is to make sure that floppy disk interface is working. Then I'm going to add secondary floppy disk interface and uh, then finally IDE for a hard drive. Um, right now I'm working on um, mostly software development side of things, uh, moving from ISE to Vivado and uh, making sure that constraints are right and uh, that I have all the requirements in place. I'm also experimenting with um, uh, microblaze and um, all the options to kind of replace this uh, old ARM controller with something that's modern and uh, more cost effective. So I will need a little bit of time to kind of figure out the software uh, elements and make sure that it's, everything's running smoothly. Um, but uh, for the most of it, so far I have pretty good results and hopefully within a few weeks I'll have something to show as a up and running uh, first version of, uh, of uh, Minimico running here. So that's one thing. The second thing is uh, I was thinking maybe to move from S50 to S100 uh, only because of the IO limitations. Um, S100 can go to up to 400 pins, IO pins, which will be required for all the peripheral support that I need for, for AmiCube. CPU slot, um, two floppy headers, ID header. I also want to have um, HDMI plus uh, Ethernet and all that good stuff. None of that is a problem. Uh, everything kind is kind of already there. Um, I just need to connect the wires and uh, adjust software, but the problem is um, in testing and make sure that uh, timing is correct and uh, the whole thing is stable. So that's where we are with that. I'm also considering moving to that Zinc platform from, uh, from AMD or from Xilinx, uh, but because most of these um, cores, uh, gaming, uh, retro cores, all computers, um, ports of all computers, they require some sort of, uh, they rely on the, on some sort of ARM uh, interface in a very particular way. So I'm going to see how will I approach that. Um, but um, that's that's it for now. Uh, that, that's, that's the state of uh, kind of porting the AGA core to, to something modern that will be good uh, support or good um, foundation for further development. While I'm doing this, uh, I've decided to put the old project uh, from my closet and that's um, this uh, Re Amiga 1200. Uh, this is the amazing reverse reverse engineer, engineer project by uh, John John uh, Hertel, if I'm pronouncing his last name uh, correctly. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's an amazing uh, recreation of original Amiga 1200 board. And uh, I figured since I have this big pick and place machine, I can uh, start uh, populating these boards. I don't have many, I have a few. And I don't intend to produce large numbers of these. I think I only have about 10, but um, because no one is really interested anymore, 
uh, and few people ask me to kind of populate the board to extent uh, possible I'm going to do that so I'm going to produce few boards with um, passive components um, resistors LEDs transistors um, capacitors also I'm going to add this uh, logic uh, ICs they're readily web available I can even solder their own uh, true hole components they're like available and that I can buy I'm going to probably leave empty these uh, old DB I believe this is DB 23 I believe the one that's on obtainium uh, for uh, floppy disk and for um, for the RGB but uh, other than that this was assembled in literally 10 minutes uh, I'm going to include some videos of machine assembling this stuff. What is interesting in this particular case is that usually when I do something like this, it takes me about three days and there's like five or six things not working or not being soldered well, so forth. But if you do it with a, this industrial stencil printer and um, pick and place machine, first boot was perfect. And every single pin, every single um, component was soldered beautifully. I mean, I don't know if this can do the justice, but uh, if you can see, this is really industrial level perfection. So yeah, it's, it's just beauty. The only thing that I needed to do, uh, this thing didn't work, the, this expansion port, because this is, uh, this, this is hassle board, and there was a little bit of um, additional solder uh, that was done by uh, the, uh, this was done by factory, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it seems like this uh, sort of uh, style of uh, expansion is quite uh, sensitive. Um, perhaps this port as well. The clearance is very tight. So what I did, I I kind of cleaned that up and um, removed the additional um, solder um, and uh, so just lead and. Uh, since then, it's working perfectly. I've tested it with uh, ACA1233. I also tested it with um, Terrible Fire 060. It works beautifully. Also, I tested a couple of different RAM chips that I have in my collection. And I must say they work beautifully. I have quite a few of different uh, types. I use this board to test all of them and they work just, uh, as I say, perfectly. Uh, also, a good thing is that now I have a good amount of uh, these uh, original Amiga OS um, copies that I'm going to, uh, whoever wants to buy a board will get the kickstarts and with a, a licensed version of the OS 3.2. I received this from Hyperion and uh, now from now on, whoever's interested to get uh, Minimig or Amiga board uh, assembled here uh, with operating system, I can do that uh, legally and uh, most of all to support Hyperion, this great company that's investing a lot of time and effort into keeping Amiga alive. I think that's really important uh, to kind of support people like that who are behind uh, Amiga, Amiga Tech. So that's that. Um, what else I can say? I mean, this is a two-sided board. By, by two sided, I mean there are components on both sides. Uh, although this is only passive components here, resistors and capacitors, uh, maybe ferrite bead here and there. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's about it. I don't have this little thing in red, but uh, black looks good as well, and uh, LEDs are red, so it's kind of pretty pretty awesome. So I can produce these as well. This will also come as a bonus uh, together with, um, with the OS. This comes together. And uh, I'll post this on the Minimic website, uh, one board that's completely assembled. And then I'll have about a few of these, maybe, as I said, 10-ish of these boards half assembled, where you can um, add Amiga components from your board and Bob's your uncle, you're all set. Uh, with a little bit of luck, because as I said, this is not easy. These parts, 
if you're doing if you're soldering this manually it's quite a skill um, pitch is not tiny but there's something about it the the angles they make this so so difficult um, to do manually and as I said I wish I had these chips because now I can do this um, with the machine perfectly every time it's incredible how easy it is to do it with the pick and place machine and the uh, video will follow of the of the process so yeah um, I'll keep everyone posted about the progress of Amicube that's my priority this is what I'm focusing on I want to produce Amiga computer that can run 060 that has the floppy hard drive ethernet HDMI, USB, all that good stuff. Because uh, why? Because um, we don't have uh, anyone producing these custom chips at, at this moment, and uh, this is the only way to to kind of have Amiga done in hardware, which uh, which has a cool factor to make these computers. If you're into hardware, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not. Raspberry Pi works just fine. So that's that. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll keep you all posted. Thank you. As promised, this is the recording of uh, first um, placement of 805 components on the Amiga 1200 board. As you can see, it's even though it's a first time and uh, maybe the order of the feeders it's not quite optimized it's going pretty well and accurately the only thing is uh, during this first time I only placed um, some components because I needed um, this uh, tray for customizes which I printed, um, printed out later but um, it's uh, for me it's just incredible to see this uh, how fast and reliable the whole process is how easy this is comparing to what i did before assembling all this manually which was you know taking an entire day um, the only thing that's worth mentioning here is that i already did the bottom side and i did the reflow uh, uh, through the um, reflow oven uh, soldering of the bottom components Usually in factories they they do it differently. They place all the components and uh, they just keep um, based holding the, these little components on the bottom, which is completely possible, completely fine. And then uh, they run everything through a reflow oven. Very often they use this little um, uh, how can I say? It's almost like a dispenser with a red uh, glue so the components on the bottom are glued uh, before going to the reflow oven just to make sure they don't fall off but what i do usually i i do it in two phases i place the components on the bottom uh, then go through the reflow oven and then i um, place the board on um, some sort of um, standoff uh, to make sure i don't um, kind of knock off the components during the reflow process for the top side and for me it works just fine um, although it's a little bit more effort and labor involved but it's, it's just fine I just want to make sure that uh, whoever buys these boards from minimic.ca uh, that the generous amount of proceeds will go to John as um, support for his fine work and um, just a heads up, I won't be doing this in uh, on large scale. I'm going to produce about 10 boards uh, and then I'm going to focus on Amicube uh, development. But at least once in a lifetime, assembling and producing Amiga 1200 this way is just a uh, pure pleasure. And uh, keep, just I'm going to keep you posted. Thanks for watching and uh, talk to you soon.